Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Public Weekly Meeting. We are the 13th of September 2022. Today we have uh, myself, Damien Duportal, Bruno Verharten, Seb, Stéphane Merle, Mark Waits, and Hervé Lemeur. I, for oh, I forgot no one. Okay. Um, you can find the collaborative note on the current Zoom chat, and that will be published in community. So first of all, I'm sorry, I was on holidays. So we are late on the publication of the recording of previous meetings, both notes and videos. Um, Mark, can you confirm that the previews that you managed are still on the Zoom account, so I can retrieve them and publish them to YouTube? They are on the Zoom account still. I haven't deleted them. OK. I also cool. have not published them. I was too lazy to publish them. No problem. Um, so I will take care of them. And uh, thanks, Hervé, for sharing uh, the one that you managed. Sorry, because the first day of my holidays, looks like that Mark was also off. And I forgot to share the credentials. So I promise that won't happen again. Next time, I will share the account with you folks. My bad. <laughs> thanks for taking care of that. Let's get started with announcements. So as usual, the weekly. Um, so I saw someone was faster than me. So the version, the 2.368 version of Jenkins has been successfully released, at least the WAR file. The Docker image and the packages are currently being built or already published. And I assume the rest of the checklist for the release has to be run, but almost there, no obvious error. That correct? Okay. That's that's correct, and the Docker image exists now as well. So I just confirmed it's cool. it's visible also. So Stefan, you know what will be the next step after or that the meeting for you? Is visible. Yes, I know. Stefan is our new uh, uh, designated volunteer to update the Docker image of Jenkins Core. <laughs> no, no, I did volunteer already. You just uh, designed myself. You are doing a great job, so thanks for that. That's quite the removal of a mental uh, burden for me. So many thanks. Don't hesitate to the, to ask the other and to rotate the role because it can be quite annoying. So don't worry. Many thanks. Do you have other announcements? No. Okay. Uh, let's review the upcoming calendar. So next weekly. Next Tuesday, if I'm correct. Next week, as usual. A next LTS, I don't remember when is it planned. Um, when we are 28 days from September 7, so October 4 or something. I can look it up, Damien. Okay, cool. So that means after the DevOps world, so no worries right now. Correct. Um, your mission in Fratim is we should check that after that meeting, we all add, if it's not the case, either the public Jenkins calendar with that information or a new event on our team calendar for the next LTS. That's a core responsibility. Um, next security release, I'm not sure they have uh, one published yet, any dates. So yes, um, there might be one uh, in the upcoming months, as usual. <laughs> as soon as it's public, uh, we can talk about that. Next major event, uh, so I haven't seen a lot of catastrophes. 21 of, of September for the security release that is planned, and we talked about that already. So it's it's public. OK. So 21 One. of September, so Friday next week, am I correct? Oh, Friday. Good. It can't be Friday. Friday? No, no I, security. Think looking, I think you're looking in Wednesday. October. So it's 21 September is a Wednesday. You had me very frightened there. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So that means it's not a weekly day. So that means don't merge anything that day, as usual. 
uh, next major event except the DevOps world in two weeks where um, part of the team here will be traveling. So we'll uh, shift. Um, we will have to discuss during the Jenkins where we'll have a contributor summit. I don't remember the special date time, but I propose that we cancel the Jenkins Infra weekly meeting because with the all the things that will happen at the DevOps all, I feel bad for letting Stefan running the meeting alone. <laughs> You're so nice. I, Thank uh, you. That, that's that's actually the day of the contributor summit, so it's it's. It, it would be unworkable for four of the five of us in this meeting right now to attend, right? It will exactly collide with Contributor Summit. So, so yes, cancel makes sense to me. Yeah, and I don't have the, the CDS account for the, for the registration, for the recording. If that's the only problem, we can share it yeah. with you. With no, 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 that's <laughs> fine. No, uh... You can use it. Some... I mean, you ask for it. <laughs> DevOps world in two weeks. Jenkins infra meeting canceled. Um, I uh, don't remember the exact calendar. 27, right? Uh, correct. So I'll take care of removing the invite. Damien, to remove the invitation from calendar okay no major events as far as i know um, so next week should be security release the week after part of the team on the us and the week after we might have a lts release quite the agenda okay let's proceed with the tasks uh, many thanks again Hervé, for the automating system that allows us to extract these tasks in a nice way and so usable way. Um, I'm taking the task in the order of the meeting notes. That should be the same, but yeah, with GitHub, I'm never sure uh, that we have all the same view and so I'm taking them on the left of my screen. We had build failing uh, with Packer images um, that happen only on virtual machines, Linux, all CPUs, all clouds, not on Docker, not on Windows. Um, on these virtual machines, uh, there were some Python packages installed. And when it's installed uh, on virtual machine, the content of the package is not exactly the same as when you install it on a container. <laughs> And this is because of the way Python default user for pip works. And sometimes it does not download all the transitive dependencies. And we were missing two transitive dependencies in the process. So now these transitive dependencies for the Azure CLI have been added explicitly. So we are sure that it's installed on all, platform, on all platforms and that won't happen again. I haven't tracked the exhaustive list of transitive dependency of the Azure CLI. I talked about it, I listed them, and I decided to just fix the issue because adding more than 200 <laughs> transitive dependency was a bit too much. I expect people to do that for me. So yeah. Um, a note, we are not using the distribution package because it's not published by Microsoft or IRM machines. And we have our machines running on different where we need AZ command line. So we keep using Python installation. No question? Next one, approve Jenkins IO domain on the GitHub organization. So that was uh, one fix for Jenkins Infra and Jenkins IO. Thanks, survey for taking care of this one because we were missing the Jenkins CERT or GitHub organization, which is a separate organization. So they did all the lifting with the SEC team and now they have that nice badge on their organization. So many thanks. That was a nice job. Did I forget something on that topic? No. Um, remove Jesse as default assignee for pipeline Groovy Lib plugin. Uh, I think that team or, is it team or URV will remove the, or even Mark? Thanks, Mark. 
Uh, so GSC is not going away, but it was a former plugin that has been moved somewhere else on another topic. So that made yeah. sense. It was it was some Jira administration, and I'm not sure how is everybody on the infra team actually a Jira administrator? I don't think so. Yeah, so that uh, may no, indicate. We haven't. Yeah. But the reason yeah. is because it gives you access to the whole uh, Jenkins security. Uh, so you right. have access to sensitive uh, data. Uh, not that we don't trust you, but less people have access to this, better it is. Because once you have access, you can extract all the vulnerability list of Jenkins. Right which is we prefer keeping the model. It's just that we need someone from the infra able to access the whole thing. Right. Archive custom distribution service. Um, so yes, that has been done. That has, was a former service that we removed from the infra a few months ago. And I assume that was the repository. Thanks team for taking care of that one. I'm adding a... Uh... Preparing a pull request to add a command to IRC bot to archive repository and change the description of them. Oh, nice. Uh, is there an issue to track it or should I write it uh, on the work in progress? There isn't any issue for it. No need for one, just to know where I write it. Uh, incoming work by at Hervé. Many thanks. To have an IRC bot. Archive command. Many thanks for that. Uh, weekly release build does not resume. Uh, thanks everyone involved in that one. The issue was if accidentally someone from the team, in particular Damien Duportal, merge re um, some re pull request on uh, the release CI uh, controller and it's redeployed, um, the release was not restarted. So there were multiple issues at um, task because if the controller restart properly, it should continue working with the running task on the pod agent. But first, most of the issues were planned on a parent build that wasn't doing that wasn't even requiring any agent. So we removed this pod allocation for the release, and it worked today without any flow. So proof that it wasn't required. The goal of that parent build is to trigger the sub-build release, and then trigger the package. Also, we have added a, system, a retry system that Jesse worked on, that if there is an issue with the agent or controller both during the packaging part, it's automatically retried. So it say, OK, it failed, and it retry a second time. And it, so we can use spot instance, for instance. If the agent is killed abruptly, then it will restart. Jenkins has the knowledge of the reason of the failure. We did not, and it's really important, that's why I'm giving these details. Thanks to Jesse, he pointed out that this retry system must only be enabled on pipeline that are idempotent, which means you can run the, the same pipeline two, three, four, at least one time, you will have the same results. And publishing a release is not idempotent because you cannot override a release, at least on the Maven repository. It's, you should not, and it has been blocked on our systems. So once you have release, if you run the initial release build that build Jenkins, run the test, create a new tag, and then deploy that tag to the repository. If you run it a second time, that means you will create a new tag. So it's not idempotent. So you don't want an automatic retry in case of failure on such a build. So the last case we have to track now is maybe we could run on some cases where during that build that build Jenkins and tests, sometimes the controller could still restart if the mean continue merging pull request all the time. And it should continue working because that's what the pipeline is expected to do in normal case. However, if we see issues on that, uh, so I'm asking Mark because you are the author of that issue, if, but it's for everyone. If you see again non-resumability, so not a retry, but continuing the work after the controller restart, then in that case, we might have a real bug. And Jesse asked for more details if we can reproduce this one or if you see new occurrences. 
Thanks. I'll keep an eye. I will watch. Um, we can artificially try it. <laughs> Since we can retrigger a weekly release when we want. No, I want, especially with the security release next week. Otherwise, I will have people visiting me <laughs> physically. <laughs> well, and, and I think the security release next week is only plugins. So you don't, but, but triggering yep. weekly builds are more than frequent enough. Yep. Any question on that topic? Okay, um, next topic I had was archive extra executable war, so a repository not used anymore that has been archived. Uh, so thanks team again for doing that. And Hervé, uh, by the way, uh, if there are ISC bots involved. Um, an issue, a CI, an outage on the CI Gates Kubernetes cluster. It's that issue is, uh, was uh, dated two weeks ago the last day when I was working, there has been a deployment of the AWS autoscaler. It was fixed before my holidays, but I forgot to put all the fixes. And we have updated the components and fixed the issues. There was a bug in the Elm chart. So we had to wait for the new version of the Elm chart fixing the bug. That kind of thing happened sometime. So we lost two builds, two plugin builds that were restarted manually. And uh, that was an outage of 15 minutes on ci.jenkins.io. Uh, so the issue has been closed with details on the postback. No more action expected there. Upgrade CI to the latest LTS. We had the LTS release, we had to use it. So thanks, uh, thanks a lot on uh, all the, uh, Stefan on preparing and merging the Docker images because I had a clean state with only the changes related to the LTS. That was easy. So in less than two hours, everything was deployed and running flawlessly. Full GDK 11 for everyone. And last fully completed task, delay an account to be deleted in Jenkins IO. Um, so thanks survey. I think that you are the one who took care of that. Uh, so a reminder, in order to prove identity when someone has such a request, um, deleting an account, so something related to the account in the LDAP, being able to comment a Jira issue is one way to prove that the person is able to access the account. Because if you ask them to send you an email, it's not good enough to prove they are the person they, they, they pretend to be. That's the context of an account on accounts Jenkins IO. Uh, for people who have to prove ownership of GitHub repository, that's another process. I think also if this user didn't have any permission in the repository permission update, uh, update uh, repository before Good deleting point. him. Well, and, and I wonder, is there a place where we should be putting these kind of challenge techniques? Because I, I like knowing those techniques. The technique that Hervé used is really helpful. It's, oh yes, of course, if you still have your Jenkins.io account password, you can update a bug report and that will prove it. Yep. And, yeah. and so in that's- the runbook, there is the uh, in the account part of the runbook. I'm not sure the challenge are described there. I first went with uh, mail, but then Kevin uh, suggests me to use a comment on a Jira issue instead. I, I like that. Well, and, and I use a similar challenge on GitHub side to prove that they own a GitHub account, asking them, please fork the Git client plugin repository into your account. And yep. that's when I see that the fork is visible, I know that they, they did it. So, so those kinds of challenges, I think, are a good a good thing for us to describe. I, and I have never put that fork thing in the in the runbook either. So I think maybe we want action items to say update the challenge yeah. the challenge technique so that we know for various scenarios. Hey, if they have their password still, have them update and make a comment on a Jira issue, and that's proof they have it. Nice one. So that means we have to update the existing uh, runbook. Uh, for that part. Who's volunteering for that? Yeah, I changed that. Thanks. Thanks a lot.
No more question? Okay, I'm proceeding for the work in progress subjects. Um, latest link for some plugins on archives Jenkins IO are outdated. So it's a second topic. We already had an issue with the latest on the get Jenkins IO mirror system. And now we also have that on archives Jenkins IO. Uh, haven't diagnosed yet. Both are different systems. One is uh, as uh, links generated by the update center process, which is the case of this one. The other as uh, links that are unreferenced by the Azure CLI command tools pushing to an Azure bucket storage. So these are two different things. Um, we haven't worked on that yet. Just commented and acknowledged to the end user because they asked if it was the right place to ask. And if they did something wrong, they didn't. That's an issue on our side. Um, publish acceptance test harness Docker image on release. So now the image is built and pushed as the latest image. The next challenge um, that underlines a uh, big trouble with the CD process uh, of the Jenkins plugins is that Jenkins, on our, on our instance, we have a policy that say don't build a tag which is older than three days. The goal is that if you accidentally scan a repository that rediscover all the tags since the beginning, you don't want Jenkins to start rebuilding, not only because it consumes resource for nothing, but also publishing at the risk of overriding existing Docker images in that case. So that's why we put that. The problem we have is that the tags created when the CD process used for plugins, it's a GitHub release object and it's generated by a release drafter as a draft. So it's not visible publicly. That draft is created once you merge a pull request after a release, it starts creating the new release note and it creates a temporary tag. That tag has a unique identifier. Then uh, the day you publish the release, it will create a tag associated to the release pointing to the moment in time where you want to release. The kind of Git tag created by the GitHub release, which are two systems, is known as lightweight, which means the tag is only a label pointing to a SHA, that's all. It does not have a timestamp. The timestamp is the timestamp of the commits, which means the tag was seen with a more than three days old, even if Tim just created it a few minutes before. So Jenkins was not picking it up. And that will be the, that will be the same with Travis, Circle CI, GitLab, even GitHub Actions. It's just that by default, the, the tags created by a GitHub release are lightweight. So the solution, because we already met that problem with uh, the Jenkins and Fra Im Docker images, that are not using CD, but still same pattern, release drafter and everything, we create a, tag, a special kind of tag name annotated. So it's a tag with a sign body associated to the tag, where you can put change log, message, like with a commit. And when you create an annotated tag, the timestamp become the time when the tag with the annotation was created and pushed. For us, it was easy. We did that five months ago. We add the flag dash A when creating the tag. So instead of git tag, you git tag dash A, name of the tag, you push it and that's all. Here, it's trickier because uh, we had to open a contribution to the CD process. And now I'm in the process of testing it on the Jenkins plugin infra test to see if it works as expected. Right now, my contribution is not working, but we need that. So, um, I will continue working on that this week if I can make it. Uh, end of week, if I haven't find a viable solution, then uh, I will follow Jesse uh, tip, uh, adding on that specific repository to solve the acceptance test harness uh, problem. Uh, we will add a GitHub, a specific GitHub action triggered when a release is published that will take care of annotating the created tag manually. That will be the worst Akish way. But I think if we're able to do that on a specific mm -hmm. GitHub action, that's worth doing it on the current action. So, Debian, just to be sure, you've got a way to convert a non annotated tag to an annotated tag, and yes. Git allows that. 
If oh. you add the if you add the flag dash dash false, yes. That's cool. <laughs> okay, right. All right. So um, it's it's actually a tag replacement that's happening, and so the repository absolutely. must allow replacement of tags yep. in order for that you, to work. Got absolutely. it. Absolutely. Um, the thing is that if you can create a release, you can override a tag. There is no blocking. It's not like overriding code. It's different. But there are two downsides. I don't know the behavior if you have a release pointing to the tag that you override. I'm not sure how is the link working. Is the release unpublished or found or just updated to use the new tag? I don't know. And if you override a tag that was already annotated, you lose the previous annotation. And in the annotation, you have the JPG key signator. So that might create some security issues. So that one was pr uh, pretty tricky. The good thing is that now InfraCI is able to build and publish images on the Jenkins CI organization. So we can provide uh, that service to more projects on the community, not only the Jenkins Infra itself. The, the idea here, it's a kind of CD. They can still have CI build and test with the same method, same tooling, uh, same adolint uh, constraint publicly. And we only do the deployments. So that means we could ideally start pushing the official agent images, for instance, from InfraCI. I don't say we should, I just say we are technically capable for some projects. Uh, next one, thanks a lot, Hervé, for hosting plugin yield scoring application. So there, that's a new GSOC project led by Adrien Le Charpentier. Uh, with uh, one or two JSOC attendees. I don't remember how much. Um, so we will have to host that as infrastructure in a way that they make them as autonomous as possible for the scope of the JSOC. And then we will see how to productize this one. That means providing them CI, which we already did a few weeks ago. And now it was the CD part, if I understand correctly. We are more in the CI part. Uh, I uh, added a parameter to be able to unstash um, artifact, like in their case, the dot jar uh, build. And uh, so uh, I've modif I modified uh, or build the Docker and publish image function. So it can unstash uh, the artifact generated before calling this function. Okay. So this one is good. I have to add some tests in the pull requests on the pipeline library, so it's uh, clean. And cool. then uh, I think Adrien is uh, working on the M chart. Uh, oh, cool. Use his uh, Docker image. I proposed him to make it, but he wanted to take a look. So good. Uh, with uh, the M chart, uh, we will have to add a database somewhere, and then we will be able to host uh, this on fraud public K8S just on Azure. Okay. So, if For you now, need information about database, I don't remem remember that uh, Stefan worked a few months ago on manage PostgreSQL database on Azure, which has been terraformed. So, you should be able to take the work from him. So don't hesitate to ask him for to pair. That will be interesting to work uh, together on that if the need be. And uh, so GSOC student uh, needed uh, an URL to put in uh, the form. Uh, the, and uh, so I put uh, a redirection in place on uh, plugin dot dash uh, else dot uh, Jenkins dot io. It's uh, redirected to, for now, the GitHub page of the plugin health scoring uh, repository. So it's displaying as you read me for now.
We don't hear you, Damien. Sorry, I was muted. I might have muted, sorry. Uh, so thanks a lot. That's a lot of work. Uh, many thanks. Don't hesitate uh, to help, continue helping Adrian like you do. Uh, that's really important that they are, uh, uh, they don't wait too much on us and they are as autonomous as possible. I think uh, once the initial installation will be done, that will be easy for them to continue to deliver them. Any more questions? Nice job, folks. So next one, reintroducing artifact caching proxy for CI Jenkins IO. Um, just to, um, because I forgot to talk about that on the announcement. So we had a meeting with Gfrog. We will need to start a discussion that should mainly take place during the contributor summit in two weeks about the future and how we use Gfrog artifactory system. Uh, we have a constraint is that we need to decrease our bandwidth usage on the system. Um, the order of magnitude is five to six times less bandwidth should be consumed. We consume a lot. Uh, we have learned a lot. Daniel started knowledge sharing with me about the legacy, uh, even if Mark already has some. So the goal is uh, continue working on that area. There are multiple solutions that all solution will involve an effort on our area. First point, I have been granted by Daniel yesterday access uh, admin access to the repository. So I should not require that access. It's a separated account, but I will uh, publish uh, a runbook with the rules. The main rule is don't delete anything. And the second rule is don't zap the cache, absolutely. I will open an issue that Daniel shared with me. We have a virtual mirror, the same that uh, Hervé is currently building for that topic. And that virtual mirror does not have a corresponding upstream since months or years, which means if we zap the cache, we lose artifacts that are used. So we will have a task to download all the artifacts of that specific virtual mirror and store them again on Gfrog as a stored system. Yeah. <laughs> Knowledge sharing. Uh, Hervé, can I let you then take the next step to explain the status and the problem you are solving or facing on the mirror for that repository inside our infrastructure? So I that scopes it. Yeah, so um, I'm still uh, bouncing around uh, some error, permission error. Uh, I fixed um, the helps probe I needed for the container in Kubernetes, and I'm working on the Digital Ocean uh, proxy providers. Uh, I have to. I am. Um, uh, I had uh, last week uh, an internal load balancer. And I'm now uh, deploying an external load balancer, so I can refer to its uh, IP address uh, more easily as code. Um, so this is in progress. I think as soon as uh, as soon as I fixed uh, the else and permission error, I will be able to put the Azure proxy uh, in test or, or start. And then we will be able to add uh, the other provider uh, as soon as they are ready. Nice job. That wasn't an easy one, <laughs> honestly, because it's really an edge case for uh, Kubernetes there in terms of pattern. Um, digital sound incoming. So next step, test it. Is that is that a good summary? Yes, and uh, we have the Jenkins Safra test plugin uh, for basic testing. And I, I, uh, I uh, like to know, I will ask uh, what is a plugin with the most uh, dependency? So a big one to build. Search uh, big plugins in terms of tips. Cool. 
is the Git plugin mark having a lot of Maven dependencies? It has some Maven dependencies. Is is a I, I don't know how how would I assess a lot, Damien? Sorry. I, I, I have no idea. I would, yeah, I would, uh, yeah. Looking at the log of Maven, and if you have time for one coffee or two coffee, I don't know. Oh, oh, you're th saying download? Yeah, well, okay. Any any plugin downloads most of the internet to do its build, right? <laughs> That's so it's it's coffee counting the the mark. It's yeah. the way to know. Yes, sorry. Maven dependencies power powered brewing machine for coffee. Mm. <laughs> Mm. That will be a nice October first topic. Thanks a lot, uh, Hervé. That's a topic of utmost importance. So we have to continue the effort there. Um, that's uh, a way to communicate also to Gifrog that we are working actively on reducing the bandwidth consumption. Uh, we'll get back uh, publicly with more information once we will start the topic. Uh, we might need to run some experiment on the infrastructure by enabling authentication uh, for our agents. So that means one request to the LDAP for each Maven download, because at first sight, we don't know if the, uh, it doesn't seem to have some uh, LDAP authentication caching for a session on uh, GFrog. However, there might be some, because that's the second thing, uh, we, we will have a migration of GFrog uh, they told us that they still have to communicate the date time, but they will migrate from the current machine hidden somewhere that they are using to their new platform. So then we should be able to get back on the system. That means uh, uh, almost one hour outage on repo .org. They will communicate with us uh, the date and time, and we will have to update status uh, at that moment. The good thing is that that will grant us access to more metrics on their uh, portal, which will be interesting. Um, in terms of storage, we already, and even some metric, we already have some information on the admin currently, but mostly storage, it's ordered and bandwidth. About metrics, unless you have a question about GFrog or mirroring. Nope. Uh, Datadog metrics for uh, one AKS cluster. Um, it's weird and I don't understand, but they are missing metrics only for prod public gates cluster. I can't really understand why, because temp private works and it's in Azure also. It's the same version. Um, EKS and DOKS are perfectly fine. We have uh, all the metrics already and everything is, works fine. So we took the opportunity to make the Datadog installation on all cluster in high availability mode as recommended by the M chart. But still there are some metrics missing. I don't know, and there, is, there are no error message on the cluster agent. So we will have to diagnose a bit more. We have partial metrics, but not all. Reason why we detected that because of the work that Hervé is doing. He needs to check some metrics about the artifactory. So on DOKS, you will have a bunch of metrics. But thanks to the work of Olivier, we also have complementary metrics on our internal private Grafana. If you open your VPN and go to Grafana Jenkins.io, then you should reach our private instance, which run on prod public gates itself. And there is dashboard with a lot of metrics. Especially, it's really useful for tracking the uh, out of memory processes, but also CPU usage. So that's work in progress because we need to diagnose a bit more this one. Uh, Twitter Jenkins release accounts. I didn't took the required time. Thanks, Hervé, for backing me up on that during my early days. We have access to the Twitter account. Uh, Hervé, you made a proposal for maybe just revoking the token used by the LVR and adding a new automation implementation. So the goal of that account is to create tweets that come from the RSS publication of the plugins and project on Jenkins. Um, so yeah, uh, I still need to answer to the LVR support, the ticket you opened, Hervé. Maybe oh, they will grant us. It's closed and they can't do anything. They can change email for another email, but with the same Koshuke domain. 
Okay. So I sent him an email, but I didn't have any response and I didn't want it to ping him again for this. Okay. Now that we know that the email associated to the account is Kosuke's, we can still ask him to recover the account yes, like I've, we did for the Twitter. What I've asked. Yeah. Him. Yes. Yeah. But that's Kosuke on this pile of email. Yeah, so yeah. That, that means uh, I'm, I'm, yep. yeah. I'm taking the next escalation. And if it won't work, I will escalate to Mark or Daniel or people closer to Kosuke. <laughs> Well, and but, and we'll see him at DevOps World actually. So it's, oh, it's yes. perfectly okay. We'll be we'll we'll be elbow to elbow with him at, at, at DevOps nice. World. And that's a great opportunity if we haven't resolved it by then to just say, hey, let's do it together. And I'm sure we'll have a computer with him. He, as far as I know, he 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 very frequently does, yes. <laughs> nice. Thanks for the reminder. I forgot that he was uh, attending, so Okay, so Hervé and I will be, that will be our mission during the DevOps world. So I propose that uh, we put that one on hold uh, for the init weeks. Looks good for you? Yes. CI Jenkins IO collecting Datadog metrics for the ephemeral virtual machine agents. So Stefan, almost yeah, there? I will say exactly the same thing than last week. Almost there. I might think that for that, uh it's it's just going to production but i need to make sure with you how i would do that but okay this one i'm i, I did azure i did ec2 uh, amazon and it's it's now working since uh, yesterday or even this morning next in phase and then cool great job on that one because uh, then we will be able to publish a dashboard to our developers so they can start analyzing the resource usage of their builds on virtual machine it will be especially useful for the, the acceptance test and some core builds. Many thanks for that work. Next one still you, Stefan. Um, so we have the, uh, the high level topic is providing Java 17 Windows agents. We have the all in one container Oh, that's why it's for me because it, that shouldn't be for me because there's windows in there. Exactly. The all-in-one so the, container, yes. So it's for Linux, but that's the first step because it's easier to manage because we all have mostly Linux knowledge. Um, so the goal is to have the same Docker image, whatever kind of container agent you run as soon as it's Linux. And that image is built by Packer, which means you have the same tools and the same path as the virtual machine templates. So, so I think that this one is close uh, for for resolved too, as I'm uh, right now trying it on the on the plugin, the test plugin, infra test plugin, and uh, I, I saw that it it's crashed on the 17, but I'm not quite sure of why. But I'm okay. in a good direction. Cool. Which means once we have. Um... This one we will only have to communicate to the developer and we will try your rollout. Oh, I will have to, for now it's only on Digital Ocean, so I will have to put that on the other uh, yep. Kubernetes too. Of course. And, and then we will have to discuss how we merge that to the production and talking to developers first. So first we send an email with the timeline, but that's my proposal. We send yep. an email when we are sure that it works on both with your testing. We send an email saying, here is the issue. Uh, here is the timeline. And the day of the timeline, you have prepared a pull request that remove your testing templates and change the existing one. They keep the same name and labels, but you change the rest of the setup. And we try. If it doesn't work, we revert it back to the old images. And then we we keep watching for for the builds and the feedbacks. But the most important part is to let developers know at least one day before so if they have a build failing or a release failing, they know that it's not because of them, but because of us. And they can let us know it's not working. So we can quickly revert and unblock them if needed. That's yeah. the goal. I thought that we will keep the old agent as a backup with another name, but no. No, because there will be no way, as you discovered on the pipeline yeah, library right. code, there is no way for the developer to say, I want to use the fallback. And it's better to have only simplified configuration, so we have less 
things to test at a given time. And if it doesn't work, we'll roll back and start again with the test. Understood. Looks good? Yes. So almost there. Um, yeah. Next step still on that topic. Uh, I've almost successfully built a Windows container with the same provisioning script as the virtual machine. Uh, I'm in the process of what is missing on the Windows Server Core container that the all the cloud machines have on their template for Windows Server. Um, I had issues with OpenSSH, some packages, but almost there. Uh, I have two tools on the 24 tools that we installed, two that are missing, so almost there, which mean um, once Windows container are okay, uh, then we can start adding the Windows 17 agent with the all-in-one pattern, that will be easy. Um, Windows container, I'm, I'm failing only the provisioning, but right now on my pull request, InfraCI is already able to spawn a Windows machine and build container, which means the heavy lifting has already been done. That should help us a lot. No more question? A word on separated pipeline for update CLI. Uh, Hervé started to split in two pipelines for Kubernetes management as the first POC for that uh, concept. The idea is to have separated pipeline and separating jobs in infra CI that take care of running update CLI, diff, and apply. So then we would have less complex pipeline because split in two uh, a la GitHub workflow. Uh, right now we are using a static definition with job DSL of a multi-branch pipeline for this one to validate that the checks and everything works in the usual workflow of our pull requests. And um, it's blocked by a missing feature on our Elm chart that define the jobs for Jenkins controller in Cube. We, we want to use a GitHub organization and it's not implemented yet. It's only a matter of you writing the template. The goal is we would have a GitHub organization scanning the search all Jenkins infra for pipeline name Jenkins underscore update CLI. And it would automatically run them as an update CLI process standard. No more configuration, it's only automatic scanning. That's the initial idea. That might be wrong. We might need some specific pipeline or credential that we won't want to share or specific tuning that will make us having to define specific multi-branch. But right now we don't see a lot for the only the scope of update CLI. So then the convention will be add that pipeline and that will work. We can improve and iterate. We could use um, a file a token per repository. There are multiple solutions, but we are there. Uh, the goal is to simplify our pipeline. So they are faster and we don't wait for update CLI. We parallelize as much as possible. Did I miss something, uh, Hervé? Nope, okay. Chart, POC on Kubernetes management. Thanks for that work, Hervé. Uh, publish pipeline step doc generator on backend extension indexer. That will be for next week. Uh, the goal is to stop having CI Jenkins IO publishing uh, files that are used to build Jenkins IO website. Not only it's, it's unsafe, but also it's slowing down security processes. So the goal is to have a job on infra CI, which is mainly a report job that would upload the result of these builds on a bucket, which is publicly available because that, the goal is that having that data, but that data will be generated on infra CI. So we can stop CI Jenkins IO and rebuild the website Jenkins IO still successfully, even with CI Jenkins IO down. I haven't worked on that yet. Uh, anyone interested can start working on that. It's build on jobs. Uh, otherwise I will use it, uh, I will take it as fallback. Um, I haven't started working on mirror brain uh, uh, cleanup that involved uh, maybe breaking all the public the publication of all plugins. <laughs> so uh, I'm still careful on that one. I needed to go back to work and be having uh, some brain time. It's blocking the migration to Oracle for the updates Jenkins. 
So next step for me. I've taken care of incoming work by Hervé. And I think that's already a lot of work from the whole team there. Uh, Hervé and Stefan, thanks for taking care of this huge issue uh, that you are both working on. That might not look like you are working on a lot of issues at the same time, but these issues are huge, really huge. Thanks for that. Um, if anyone is uh, wants to add a topic, something new, something that I forgot, that's the time now. Okay, I don't have something else to add, so I will close the meeting, uh, publish this meeting and the previous recording, and create a new milestone. I will need your help for the releases, and that's all for me today. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks.